Okay, welcome to the No Stage. We're going to have a talk with Hernani Marcus. He's an activist of the CCC Switzerland. Give him a welcome applause. <laughs> and after all this Snowden revelation, uh, he's going to bring us closer to um, the mass surveillance uh, in terms of human language technology, so of natural language processing. So have fun with this talk. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. OK. So uh, my name is Anony Marcus. I'm activist of the CCC. And I also fight at laws there, um, introducing selector searches, like also there were legalized in Germany now to a further extent. And uh, yeah, I'm talking about abusing computational linguistics, also known as uh, natural language processing, NLP, um, for mass surveillance purposes. So I am against. So <laughs> that's already clear, I think, in the title. So, um, for the outline, uh, first we will have a look at the term of mass surveillance, I, uh, um, how I understand it. Then, uh, probably, I mean, how many of you know what computational linguistics is? Okay, not so many indeed. So, the, uh, there is, uh, so, there is a justification to show a little bit w which kind of fields there are. Um, then we will have a look at mindsets and methods uh, used for um, selector search. So it's not, it's, it's not just about searching for bomb and stuff like this. There are a little bit more sophisticated approaches, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it doesn't work, as we will see. Then I also run a known experiment um, uh, while writing my master thesis. It's, it's, uh, um, it's not representative, but it's more to, to show how this stuff looks like. And then there's also a reality check, uh, looking at the results of mass surveillance a little bit, and then we, uh, the thing, uh, then we are open for discussion. So, uh, mass surveillance is not... Is, uh, is, um, I mean, you, you have always this metaphor of the haystack and we need to find the needle if there is one indeed. I mean, that's not even clear, but they, they search for it. Um, it's not uh, necessary that you save all the data. So the Utah data center where everything is saved, this is, uh, this is not the true nature of mass surveillance. M mass surveillance is, is already given when you just go through all of it, even if you don't save it. Um, so it is, uh, if you compare it with away from keyboard or physical situations, it's a little bit like at the airports where everyone uh, must pass control and is somehow suspected to be a terrorist, a criminal agent or something like this. Or you can also compare it um, with snail mail if uh, all our snail mail uh, 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 stuff would be opened and copied and, and this. And, and uh, stuff like this, uh, usually this is not done, at least not in Switzerland, for, uh, because it's cost prohibitive, not because it, it wouldn't be cool for them, I think. So this also shows a little bit the, um, the mindset already that uh, everything is just done which is possible, and in the internet it's, it's easier to, to just search for everything than in the physical world, but there are already situations where this is also done in the physical world, like... Um, video surveillance in public spaces like airport situations uh, and also in the trains they are starting to introduce more control so the direction is, is, is this which uh, we are heading to um, and by the way even if no hits occur I mean if, if they search all your data and there are no hits they still search your data so that's still mass surveillance so the, 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 uh, you don't need the condition they found something in my data uh, to have experienced mass surveillance. I mean, if they just search you physically or electronically, this is mass surveillance, and you don't need to save the data in the end. So even if you just store the results, it's still mass surveillance occurring here. So what kind of selectors? Uh, so these search terms or patterns are called um, selectors in these um, secret service, uh, service areas. Um, um, basically, you can dis distinguish between two selectors, hard selectors. This is like m metadata selectors, like phone numbers, email addresses, chat nicknames, IP addresses, 
Good examples are the cell phone of Angela Merkel, CEO phone numbers, and phone numbers of journalists, email addresses, or also such of diplomats. Uh, on WikiLeaks, there were several disclosures where it was shown that uh, in the diplomatic and, and economic sector, lots of people were tapped. So, so there they, they know, uh, uh, and it's not that they just um, target the phone, they probably search for all occurrences of email addresses uh, in, in all kinds of data to see what's going on with this kind of uh, person, uh, which is identified by the selector. So, um, if you have less clue from what you are, uh, for what you are searching for, like, in the uh, like usually in the case of terrorists, organized crime, and uh, things like this, uh, you can also uh, make content searches, so you just assume they must be using some specific words, some phrases, some kind of language. Um, this can also be done with vo voice, of course. If you transcribe the text with speech-to-text technologies, you can search the text, so you, you can transform everything into text. Um, in this talk, it's about natural language processing, but you can do the same with graphics and uh, videos, so you can search for, for patterns. Uh, you can, of course, also combine both selectors, like hard selectors and soft selectors. Um, but in, I think in most of the cases where it's really about terrorism, they don't really, um, I mean, in the last uh, times, they knew already um, um, that's curiously enough, uh, who the terrorists are or who the potential terrorists are, but in other cases they, they don't have any clue and then they don't have hard selectors to search for, so they just try to search for everything which could somehow match their language. So um, that's a well-known slide, I think. So um, it's not that China, or Russia and other countries are not, uh, are, are, um, aren't doing the same, but um, as you can see, um, the Western, the NSA surveillance complex um, yeah, is quite well distributed, so they, ha they tap everywhere things. That that's, uh, has probably also to do with, with the, the military stations they have everywhere. I mean, uh, uh, basically the US, but also the, the EU partners. And this is something which China and Russia probably cannot do to this extent. I mean, on, on a worldwide scale, like you can see here. But also in the teeny shiny country of Switzerland, uh, you have such kind of stuff. That's for satellite-based communications. That's in Loic. That's um, a nice place in the mountains. And uh, there they also search for all kinds of stuff. Um, they want um, capture the f a fox, um, so Telefax, a message which uh, proved that there are um, illegal CIA um, prisons in Eastern Europe. This was probably one of the better things they did. On the other hand, we don't know what they are doing in all the day. So they are just searching everything in the, in the, in the satellite-based communication sector. Um, yeah. So probably I need also introduce a little bit um, to the, uh, I need to introduce a little bit to the field of computational linguistics and human language technology. So, from Wikipedia, computational linguistics is an interdisciplinary field concerned with the statistical or rule-based modeling of natural language from a computational perspective. Main interests when you talk of computational linguistics is theory and methods. So it's about using computers to analyze natural language like German, French, Esperanto. Klingon language, whatever. So um, everything is possible here. And there is also a term of human language technology, which is also used in, in the Snowden relevation, uh, relevations, uh, also in, in some of the slides. Uh, this is more when it's about the concrete application, so when it's about tools, so application of computational linguistics, then you can also say human language technology, but it's not so important, these terms. Um, so what are typical fields of computational linguistics? and HL, uh, HLT, um, these are, I mean, basic things are like tokenization. So uh, you have a text, uh, where are the boundaries of the words, uh, find interpunctations. So you just want to have the words. Usually, if, if you have just a text, um, you, 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 you don't, uh, the, the words are not marked directly if the text is a raw text, but you can, of course, look for spaces and, and things like this and try to, to split these into tokens which supposedly are words. 
with some exceptions sometimes. There's sort of uh, parts of speech tagging. Uh, uh, um, that's that's about um, um, uh, of, um, marking the words you found uh, um, in the. Um, um, according to their type, so if there are nouns, verbs, or pronouns, stuff like this. Um, if you achieved the two steps before, uh, then probably named entity recognition um, might be um, a thing you, you, you need to do, so to uh, recognize uh, word, uh, words which denote something very specific in our world, like um, Wikileaks, for example, that's a named entity, uh, or um, if, if you say Edward Snowden, there might be different ones, but statistically, usually you mean the, the whistleblower. So that's the, here you see there's already a problem probably in finding the right um, things, but um, yeah, that's the idea here. Then you can also parse the text, find syntactic structures. Uh, uh, I mean, usually in, um, in, in our language as we speak here, you have... Um, uh, a noun, verb, object kind of structure. You can try to work, uh, to, uh, try uh, to uh, to uh, to find these elements and see how they fit together and um, who is the actor and who is be who is being acted on stuff like this. Coreference recognition. Uh, that's uh, when you have pronouns which refer to 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 whole phrases or words like where or uh, something like this. So this is just a, a word, and you need to find out uh, to which noun or to which phrase this is referring to, and this is uh, quite a hard problem. It it uh, from a it doesn't always work quite well when you try to do that um, on larger texts, which also where also references are being done with a, a, a small pronoun, but referencing to the very beginning of the text and stuff like this. So it's not it's not it's not an easy problem because you you pro, you sometimes need to jump different sentences. You need to recognize this in the structure of the of the text. Then collocations are usually words which uh, tend to occur uh, together in a text. Um, this can also be named entities like names. Uh, but also just words which tend to be somehow related to each other, um, like, for example, computer and hard drive or something like this, when it's about something with hardware. So there are more complex uh, fields um, which need all of this here in general. So sentiment analysis would be to, to, uh, to uh, uh, find um, um, indicators of emotions in text. I mean, with uh, well, um, uh, so if if you if you uh, say I am crying or something, then you can probably see out of this text that the person is not feeling well or something like this. Or if you say I hate this product on, on Twitter or something, then you can also do analysis there and see. Okay, this is a negative. This person feels negative to this kind of thing. So this is sentiment analysis. Probably what you best know, um, not always for the better, uh, is machine translation. Um, so that's uh, like translating from one language to the other. Uh, in, in the 80s and um, a little bit afterwards, uh, uh, th there were attempts to do everything rule-based, so to analyze how Ang English works, how German works, and then to, f uh, to, to try to match these structures to each other. It was very hard and didn't work very well. In, the, in, in these days, it's more being done statistically. So you just have, let's say, um, texts of the European Parliament, once in German, then in English. And then you can just statistically see which words might fit together, which phrases might mean the same. And like this, you can find patterns to, um, to translate other texts. So. There are also hybrid solutions where you combine uh, insights from linguistics with statistics. I think uh, Google Translate is also going a little bit more into these directions. There's also text mining and relationship mining. Um, that's to find, for example, persons uh, which uh, and where they are. So, so to find such kind of relationships. So different, you have different entities in a text and want to find out um, uh, who is involved and which places are involved and then to connect these kind of things. 
automatic text sum summarization. Um, you can imagine this like um, when you write an abstract for a text. So if you have a long text and you, you don't want to read it, but to, to grasp directly what it is about, you can probably read the abstract, because there usually also the results are somehow outlined. Um, in most cases, you don't have an abstract or something like this. So you have a long text and you want to know what's, what's going on there. So you can uh, employ automatic text summarization. Usually, um, uh, you find out uh, um, that the, um, the, the, the sentences in the beginning, the ones in the middle, and the, the authors are at the end are somehow sent sent sentences which you can connect together to have a summary. So you still need to glue a little bit at the ends of the sentence such that things fit together, so, such that you can read fluently the things. But uh, yeah, that's a field you can also invest lots of time in. Authorship recognition, who wrote the text? So, um, yeah, this was, um, uh, th this is something which um, might also pose a threat to democracy if you have activists who, who, who need uh, an anonymity, but they have a, a really s specific writing style, are the only ones who use specific words, so probably this can lead to the, to the author uh, methods like this. And topic analysis is uh, a field where you have uh, lots of documents <coughs> and you want to find out uh, which are the topics uh, in, this, uh, uh, in, this, in these documents. Uh, is it about computers? Is it about politics? Or is it about both to some extent? So it's a probabilistic approach. But um, yeah, in the end, you just receive uh, a list of words. You can choose how many words you want and they they denote somehow what the topic could be. So in the case of computers, this could be again computer, hard drive, monitor, stuff like this. So, um, But sometimes texts are about different things, so also here it's not always, let's say, deterministic. So now uh, let's see a little bit um, how such um, methods are employed. So um, th that's an example from XKeyscore. That's the, um, yeah, let's say the NSA search engine, not, f not just for public data, but for any data, so also your communication. Um, and here they, are, they simply ask the question, yeah, what do I do if I don't have a strong selector? That means metadata for a terrorist or something. And then they, uh, yeah, they just um, start some uh, um, selector or needle creationism, like yeah, probably if someone is, is in a place where he talks another language uh, uh, than the one which is usual there, this might be already a feature of suspicion, or if someone is using encryption, um, or if someone, and that's very vague, uh, if someone is searching for suspicious stuff, whatever that means. So you see how um, that this is not a rocket science what is going on here. So it's really like the analyst just defines something and then it goes on. You, we have also very concrete examples of uh, such words. So uh, here I have to explain a little bit. We have uh, the topics which are which um, which interest here are weapons of mass distraction, advanced conventional weapons, and government organizations. So they try to find out somehow proliferation. And what do they do um, f uh, as items? Uh, just an example, you can also add other items. You have machine gun, grenade, AK-47. Uh, and then you have, you have uh, of course, um, people who want to buy this kind of stuff, political actors like Minister of Defense or Defense Minister. Then you have countries which want to buy this, that can be, in this case, Somalia, Liberia, or Sudan. And the brokers who are selling this kind of stuff, South Africa, Serbia, or Bulgaria. So we also see a little bit <laughs> um, uh, what the uh, um, NSA is looking at here. And then probably also the ports, where do these um, items go through? And then you can, of course, um, just do a Boolean search on that. So with AND and OR, you can just combine all this stuff together and search in email bodies. So all emails. So this is of course, mass surveillance. So because it's not specific, it's, it's targeting whole groups and populations. It's not just they know these three guys are doing something and they go there and do something, so they are just searching everything. 
And you can, of course, imagine that these words are also used in other contexts which have nothing to do with proliferation, terrorism, or something like this. So false positive rates naturally are, uh, na naturally are quite high. So here you see that it's not just about uh, email bodies, it can also be about chat bodies. I mean, the example is really like classical here, like how to build a bomb or a weapon. <laughs> so you see the Boolean search here, and and or kind of stuff. Um, then you can also search, of course, for document bodies, for calendar bodies, for archives, of course, the NSA or whatever, or whoever can unzip things on the fly and look at, at, the, at this material. You can also uh, um, uh, transfer everything into text. If there is some binary components, you can probably decode it. So that's all um, possible. Um, and you can also do the same for, uh, for the web area, like with HTTP requests. So it's not limited to messaging or something. It's, it's just everything, basically. Um, that's just as an overview that the NSA um, handed in some patents. So you see they are really active in this kind of field. So um, most of these things here are concern, uh, concerned with finding um, with, with searches. So somehow methods for finding large numbers of keywords in continuous text streams. So that's a sign they try to generate selectors out of text streams, which they probably denote uh, denoted as uh, suspicious so to have um kind of uh, so the kind of their training material to search for the real world stuff then and also this uh, text summarization thing is something which interests the nsa this can of course have to do with the fact that they want to uh, to have the news uh, which are out there in a in a compact way they don't have the time to read all the news um, in the case of the Islamic State, they probably should, because I think some <laughs> attacks were more or less announced there. Um, I mean, they should have read it completely, not, uh, li li uh, not with computers like this. Um, and then, of course, uh, optical character recognition. So if you have a scanned element, like with Telefax, or if you send a PDF around, where you, cannot, uh, where, where you cannot search directly for the text, you can apply optical uh, character recognition to, to, um, to get out the real text. This can also be done with images and videos and everything, basically. So, and lo lots of other things. So it's, um, it's of no, no use here to go into the details, but uh, if you are interested, um, I have also more details on this kind of things. So it's not just um, the NSA and uh, other partners in this area, it's also the European Union. So there was a project called INDECT, that's the Intelligent Information System Supporting Observation, Searching and Detection for Security of Citizens in Urban Environment. What the fuck? Um, this project ran from 2009 to 2013, so until more or less Snowden revelations. So it's not that the EU wasn't doing such things before or planning to do such things before. You will see what uh, kind of things they, they were researching. And the project uh, had a volume of 15 million euros. And um, this was part of the framework program. There are always these big research programs from the EU Commission. The, the current one is Horizon 2020. This, is, this one is the one uh, before. And in this area, they put in 1.3 billion euros to research on such things. There was also a very strange uh, research project. Um, I don't know the name now, but it was 4.5 million euros, and it was just about package detection at airports. So you see how much money they put into this kind of stuff. So to find out if someone is, is going away from his, his package, and then it, it turns, everything turns red, and someone has to uh, intervene there and stuff like this. So, there are 131 index publications, 80 of them are open access, uh, some authors are closed access in the sense that they, you have to buy them, and some are even restricted because they go too far into the details, they say. So, they, they, there are also some details about uh, the concrete operations they would like to have. Um, I have to say that this is a research project, but they created some tools and they also, have a, 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 they, they also have a systemic approach to put them all together in a big platform to surveil all of the European Union for our security, of course. Um, and 15 of these open access publications are about 
computational linguistics and human language technology. So the fields we already had a little bit before. So and now you can a little bit see what kind of features they have. Um, I mean, here they cooperated with, um, it's probably not so readable, here they cooperated with the police to find out uh, what kinds of crimes uh, um, uh, do occur. Uh, occur. And, uh, and then they uh, would like to have as features something like the type of the offense, then the presence or absence of some behavior, uh, gender of the offender, the age of the offender, and the uh, ethnic appearance. So that means um, if it happens um, that you are in the wrong age uh, or if you have the, the, the wrong skin color uh, because um, people uh, with that ages and that skin color did something in a very specific area, some criminal activity, you might also be, um, statistically, you might be um, yeah, more suspicious than others. This can have consequence in real life, in fact. Here you also see, the, the, they have, here they just constructed for, for, for a, a language application then, an, an, an uh, HLT application, they constructed a binary model. So the gender is just male or female, age is above median or below median. So it was zero, one, zero, one, it's nothing else here. Then there are white Europeans and there are Afro-Caribbeans. -Car nothing else. And uh, there is just you are occupied in the sense of occupation or you are not occupied. So these are their great features they have. And uh, if they find lots of crimes happening with such features, uh, 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 with, such, uh, uh, with such of these features, and you also have them, but you are not a criminal, you might still be suspected for something. Here you also have pattern matching. So. Um, what they did here is um, they have a list of suspicious websites, which they say they are really bad, bad websites, which um, with contents we don't want, and normal websites. And on a, on a suspicious website, you might have um, you, mi you might have um, uh, patterns like hand package boss. I mean, these are, these are just um, placeholders. You can also replace boss with. Uh, um, with, with some other term or package. I mean, it's just like, uh, it's, it's more like a placeholder for different words you can fill in. Then you might also have Everest Mountain and Tall Mountain World as a pattern. And on the normal side, which is clean kind of, you have Everest Mountain, Tall Mountain World and temperature cold weather, uh, the co temperature cold winter. And then you can of course subtract from both sides, the patterns which are available, and then you know hand package boss is the only one which is suspicious, and with that we go now out and search everything. So this is a little bit the idea here. So they control kind of their patterns with normal websites, suspicious versus normal websites. You can also do relationship mining, and they do it here in a, in a paper with some examples. So um, there are two different kind of events which are about illegal transportation of something and an illegal financial transaction. And then here you see uh, this is um, the co-reference resolution thing. So you don't have concrete names, you have like uh, we, them, we, so you, you, need, to, to, uh, you need to know uh, whom they are talking about. So probably there is a name behind it, but in the text I can find out who is the person and that they are doing something indicated by certain words which are here in the sentences. So here people are doing something in Bangladesh, some illegal activities. Um, and the, the, even the interesting thing is of course that there are no concrete names, but they still may know who the, 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 the named entities are behind this. So the, the best one I think is this here, the terrorist chat. Um, so you have, um, so here they identify uh, a name uh, that's a named entity, so they, they, this denotes a specific person, an individual, and there are also countries involved here. These, uh, I mean, GPE means geopolitical entity, and NOT means nation, so this is, um, yeah, a, ge a geopolitical entity of the kind nation. There are also other ki kinds of uh, geopolitical entities. Um, and so you see how they can find the named entities and relate this 
stuff to each other, or at least they try to do it so. From WikiLeaks, there was also an interesting um, um, document which was leaked. I mean, this is um, like um, um, marketing material, but there are st uh, still some technical things in there. This is a French company which doesn't exist anymore, Scan and Target. But uh, well, yeah, you see their, their business is extracting intelligence from SMS, instant messaging, emails. So you also see it's not just about governments. You, 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 of course, also have private actors. Snowden himself was not working for the NSA, but for Booth Allen Hamilton. So there is a, a, a private public partnership here, anyways. Um, yeah, and this is a little bit a silly example, but they just want to say that they, of course, uh, take care of small and capital letters. And if you try to write, in this case, Viagra some, somehow a little bit differently, uh, then they, st they can still recognize it. Or if you write bomb with a zero or whatever. So they just want to s t uh, tell you they, they take care of some, of some edit distance for, for, for words. Um, yes, and they do that for English, French, Spanish, and different Arabic dialects and transliterations. So there, that's yeah. Here you see um, they also provide APIs for uh, Homeland Security. So that's a good example of private-public partnership. Then here, and they also claim that uh, with some IBM machine you can yeah you can analyze one ta one thousand two hundred tweets per second and stuff like this. So, yeah, possibilities are there. <clears throat> and they also say, now it's possible. So we can do, that. We, we can do mass interception um, from a technical point of view. So uh, let's just do it. And yeah, here you see um, that they take care of different transliteration types um, of Arab. So if you want to put the Arabic letters into Latin alphabet, there are different kinds of, um, of ways to do that. Then they um, take care of that. Also here for pedophilia, they claim to have found here some features which could show that someone is sharing material, like there's a file name Heidi.rm <laughs> or four year old might be a child, and then um, the term uh, PTHC, preteen hardcore. So I'm pretty sure you also find other things with, with PTHC if you, if you uh, search around. But yeah, they, they, the idea here is that they have different features, different terms, and then can um, find <coughs> potential um, yeah, pedophilia the internet. Yes. Um, also for drug traffic detection. I mean, the, the, the numbers are already quite astonishing here with 20 to 30 millions per, uh, of SMS per, per day that you can analyze if you install the system by yourself. And uh, interesting things are also, I mean, this kind of stuff here that um, you can uh, sometimes uh, you probably know the examples of, of saying snow instead of uh, cocaine or something like this. So and of course, um, if two, let's say, real um, criminal guys are just uh, are, are always talking about snow and stuff like this, this might be, of course, uh, just uh, um, an another 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 term for for um, for the real thing. Yes, and they claim they have high precision. I don't think that this, is, that, that this is really high precision. I mean, 14 true positives, if the terms are right, you have to, uh, you have to take that into account. Per one million SMS, it's not, quite, it's not, it's not uh, um, a great result. So this is um, yeah, catastrophic in, in, some, in some way. The customers are also interesting here. So you see not just NSA, Chinese and Ru Russian guys, but also just companies whatever they are doing with this kind of system, but probably analyzing their clients, customers. So in Switzerland, because I'm from there, we also have the NDB, that's the Nachrichtendienst des Bundes, Swiss Secret Service. So they, they have, of course, the usual things like a comment. Comment is um, 
uh, if, if you if you want to distinguish it from uh, SIGINT, is uh, when you analyze discursive communications, that means uh, stuff which involves natural language. Uh, because sometimes you, you also just have signals. If computers are communicating uh, with each other, this is not Usually they don't talk in English with each other, but with some protocols, so they have their own language. So this is probably not so interesting in this area, so there is SIGINT and COMINT you can distinguish like this. Open source intelligence is, is just everything you can, you can uh, grab in the public space, also in the physical spaces. Human intelligence would be when you, um, when you involve persons to, to, to do some surveillance. And then there are also military relations and um, yeah, partners. That would be like the German BND and the cantons, because Switzerland have different states. And also, of course, image intelligence, like when you look with drones or something, can also do. And uh, in, a, in any of these kind of sources here, you might have linguistic information, which you can put into your database and search. So that's a little bit the link here. The thing I showed in the beginning, this satellite-based surveillance system, mass surveillance system, is called Onyx. It was built in 1999 illegally, so without legal basis for 45 millions. Um, there are claims that costs now went up to three or 400 million or more. And uh, it's, 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 it was not before 2005 they created legal uh, basis uh, for the system after there were some media scandals. So also Switzerland, despite being a democracy, is not behaving properly. Um, as of 2012, um, they, um, they also... Oh no, it, that, that was wrong. It was 2012 they created the legal basis. It got operational in 2005, and from there it worked for seven years illegally. And the interesting thing about this, this, this legal basis is that, I mean, for, 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 from a Swiss perspective, that's just like completely um, exaggerated. They retain content data for 1.5 years and metadata for five years, so to, to make uh, retrospective searches. And now uh, there was even a popular vote about this. We, we, uh, we launched a referendum to stop them to also do cable-based selector search, because, I mean, you know, most of communications is not flowing through these satellite-based things, but um, through fiber optic cables and other kind of cables. And, of, and so they want to tap the, the cables in Switzerland uh, to also see what's going on there. And they, there they did exactly the same thing, like 1.5 years for contents and five years for, for metadata. And then they can search. And this will, um, this, this will get effective in about a month now. We, we tried to stop it, but Swiss population didn't understand the law, I would say, and just voted with 64% yes to the law. So I think um, the debate was also a little bit difficult. Uh, we, we didn't have enough money, so it was difficult to, to win this kind of, th of things because usually you need to make lots of propaganda and really break down things to, 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 uh, to easy, understandable sentences, and we just failed somehow with that. And because it's also digital, it's about electronic things, people cannot really feel it. If, if, if we would vote about uh, searching all the snail mail, probably they would vote no because uh, th this feels like invasion, so it's physical. So that's my, uh, my view of it, uh, because usually if you, if you approach someone and want to look at his cell phone or open his snail mail, they get a little bit nervous and don't want to share the data, but on the internet everything seems fine, so just, they should just uh, search for it. I have nothing to hide. So these are the typical sentences you know already. Uh, another special thing is that in Switzerland is, it's not the... Um, the um, yeah, the civilian secret service doing the selector search, but the military himself directly. There's a unit for that, Zentrum für Elektronische Operationen in German, and um, they, pa they just pass. They just pass the results then over to uh, to the NDB. However, even though. Um, the search categories must be accepted by three instances, cor cor uh, a, cor a court, an administrative um, um, entity, and also political control, so the elected uh, uh, executives of the federation. 
um, there is a passus in, 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 the, the, in the order of the law that they can also add like author selectors if the results are not nice enough. And that's quite an issue because from a linguistic perspective you can show that if you just add some very specific words you can create kind of an author category. So even though the, 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 um, the oversight of, the, of, of, of this uh, kind of practices thinks everything is right, there is still kind of a backdoor to just add more words and do things. And in the end, they cannot really control what's going on. And we saw it also in Germany with the NSA Untersuchungsausschuss. It's just, um, it's, it's, a, it's a big mismatch of what politicians think and what's really being done. Probably in some cases they knew things, but I'm quite sure in lots of the very specific cases they, they have, they, they had no clue what they are, which terms are being entered into the system to search for. There's also another nice thing which is completely nonsense. Uh, the, so the NDB is not allowed to, to create categories uh, and uh, propose search terms uh, which include Swiss named entities like Swiss companies, let's say Novartis, or Swiss politicians, or, or, or even Swiss extremists. So that, that's, that, that shall not be possible with, with, the, with this law. Uh, but you can also find just author search terms which yield exactly the same results. So that's one way to circumvent it uh, with information retrieval and computational linguistics. And the other one is just by cooperating with author secret services and just tell them, please give me this data we cannot have and you give me the other one, stuff like this. So that's how things work. So it's just a um, strange thing here. So I then also did uh, uh, own experiments. Um, so there are two groups in Switzerland which are um, by the NDB, which are said to be the, the, extremi the main extremist organizations like left-wing um, Revolutionärer Aufbau and right-wing Partei Nationaler und Jeter Schweizer. Um, and what I did is I just took their websites as training material um, with the idea, well, probably uh, by, uh, with these two websites uh, we can extract typical words, phrases, terms which are used in these scenes and with this selectors then you can search for other kind of, of uh, groups which are similar to them. So in the end I am auto-generating keywords because that's always a little bit the, the, the mystic, uh, mystical question, what are they doing, uh, how do they come to these words and um, I'm quite sure they are not just uh, having a paper and writing down something, they are uh, concretely analyzing uh, uh, material around and then generating selectors out of it, probably they add some things manually, but um, that they just do everything manually um, is not, not realistic, I think. So in the end, um, I had 70 selectors for left wing and 70 for right wing, and uh, more concretely, uh, 30 selectors were based on um, t term frequency and inverse document frequency measures. It's just standard kind of computer science and computational linguistics stuff to, to, um, to rank documents. If you, uh, I mean, if you make a basic search engine, usually it starts with TFEDF. There are also other, a little bit more complex um, uh, approaches, but it's just a, a, a method to, to, to uh, find out the most, the, the best te terms to, uh, to, to, to um, which represent kind of the, the documents. Then I also created six selectors with intensification vocabulary. So there was a, a paper there which um, um, showed some um, um, terms which are typical for either scandalization or conspiracy kind of things. I mean, this can be um, in the most easy ways. This can things. Uh, this can be things like if you, if you say so-called democracy, you show you don't believe in democracy. So probably you are pre pretending that uh, that there is someone controlling everything, stuff like this, or um, if you um, yeah if you rent around with um, intensifiers, like with specific adjectives, you can also use such. Uh, uh, you can also um, have lists of such scandalization vocabulary, and with that create um, um, selectors. 
Then there are also topic words. Uh, that's the thing I said before with topic analysis that you can, uh, when you have a, 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 um, a bigger um, a bigger amount of, of documents, you can try to find out what what the topic is in there, and uh, this is then shown by specific words. So the selectors, 10 of them were single words, so very specific words which appeared there. Uh, 10 of them were word two grams, that means um, uh, words, two words in a specific order or just a phrase. And the 120 of them were combinations, so order doesn't matter, of words from two to 10 words, which show somehow, which uh, show to be somehow typical for these groups. And so, typical example with the FIDAF model, anti-racist action on the left-wing side, or that's now specific to Switzerland, August 1st, that's a national, <laughs> the national holiday, and uh, there the right-wing groups tend to, to group themselves and tell everyone how great Switzerland is and that we have to defend them against everyone. So that's uh, a very important um, kind of thing for them. So this even appeared as a... Um, a combination, and in this in, the, in this area of the, in the in, in scandalization conspiracy indicators, um, yeah, in the, of the, of, on the le left wing side, I mean the the indicator was pretext, and then connotations which were uh, um, collocation, sorry, which were found were action and militant, and um, on the, um, and on the the right wing side you had like adversaries lie campaigns, so they were talking a lot like the adversaries are lying in their political campaign. So you see a little bit that it seems to make sense. Um, and in the topical areas, the topic analysis on the left wing side, we had, I mean, that's, uh, that's um, probably even a good summary of what they are talking all day about, life, politics, capital. And uh, on the right wing side, you had like uh, refugees and their own name was quite important there, so because they were pretending they are the only ones doing something against it. So these are examples of selectors, and I had 140 of them in the end. And then because I, don't, I am not the NSA or the Swiss NDB or something, I just used uh, public sites to search a little bit around and look if there are matches, of course, excluding the training material itself, otherwise it would be nonsense. Um, so the evaluation they, uh, um, uh, corpora was start page uh, search engine, DocDocGo, and then there's also a, a not evil uh, called search engine for Tor hidden services at that time. Um, so uh, with 15.8 million documents, uh, documents that means HTML sites, PDFs, uh, books, everything. And then there's also this um, decentralized search engine uh, which um, has no social bias in there. So it doesn't matter who is searching for something. You don't need to log in. You just download the software, and you are part of the, the search system. So um, there you have two billion documents. And then, then I also uh, did some own surveillance. Uh, I mean, of my own kind of um, uh, material at home, with uh, where, where in the end I had 208,000 documents. It, this was just like everything, even PGP lookups, everything. So web of trust. So everything was a little bit inside, and so um, I could then search with the selectors I created based on the left and right-wing extremism things. So um, 140 selectors times five corpora makes 700 selections or searches. And then I just cut off the, um, after five results, I cut it, because sometimes you have 1,000 results, other times you have just three or even zero, if uh, you have very specific terms, you know that from your searches, if you enter something very long and specific, probably result is zero. And so in total, there were 3,500 potential hits to manually evaluate, of course, uh, to be done by two persons, to have um, control, that you are not too biased or something. Um, just uh, about 2,200 were successful, so were shown as true positives, so matching to the, to the, um, and, and not true positives, sorry, just, just um, matching. This can be true positives and false positives at, it, at this point. Coming to true positives, it was then, yeah, depending uh, on the corpus and the terms, it was 0 to 25 percent, and if you leverage for two less results, so if you have less than five results, there was another scoring function to leverage a little bit for that. So it's, it was um, 
up to 22 percent. And uh, the internal data agreement, so the, the two other two persons doing that, agreed in the left-wing uh, field, they, they were quite agreeing that they marked the same things, like true positive, false positive. On the right-wing side, it was not so easy. I think this has to do with the fact that there were lots of conspiracy sites where you don't really know if they are right-wing or just completely out of order somehow. So yet sometimes it's not so easy to to say, oh, these are right people. They can also be left-wing people or just other people. So here, at, um, here it was not so clear. So in 1.0 would of be, uh, would of course have been perfect match. So and this also shows if you have different analysts, they might not have the same perception. So that's already another point of things are getting a little bit not so rocket science style. Um, yeah, and what's the reality? Uh, that's from um, uh, um, Netspolitik. Um, um, from 25,000 hits they had in 2014 with the, with, the, um, with the selector search being done in Germany, just 0.26% were in the end marked as true positive or relevant. Um, from a Secret Service point of view, this doesn't mean uh, you can avoid uh, an attack or something, it's just interesting. And that's an absolutely catastrophic result. And there's, of course, to do with the fact, and that's now from Bruce Schneier here, that um, by making the haste take bigger, the needles don't get just like that more. It doesn't make any sense. Probably there is not even one. So just by poor mathematics, it's clear that you, you, the false positive rates will just explode the more data you, you put into your system. And so this kind of stuff is completely bullshit. doesn't work in the end. And, uh, and also in the talk of um, Beanie yesterday, had the same conclusions. Um, yeah. So that's a little bit an overview. Probably we have time for questions, 10 minutes. If, or if you want to know something more specific than it was in the slides, just go on. I think from the timing we could ask some questions. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Great talk. So please go ahead at the first yes. mic. I have a, a question. Do you have the same suspicion as I have that mass surveillance is input for mass manipulation? Yes, absolutely. I mean... Next step. Yes, absolutely. I mean, they, um, they, they, uh, it has to be noted that, for example, the NSA has a, a national interest priority framework. There are 32 surveillance fields. One of them is counter-terrorism. Others are, um, you know, things like economic innovation or, let's say, economic espionage. Other one, another one is called the leadership intentions or, let's say, how it is, diplomatic espionage. And then there are also things like um, en envir environmental movements. So this would be the political kind of activist uh, um, uh, surveillance. So, yeah, it's absolutely clear. And, by the way, in these fields, it, it works, uh, of course, better because there you know exactly who the people are uh, you are searching for. And um, depending on the features you, 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 you need to, uh, to, to classify people, I mean, if you want to know uh, um, who likes a, a certain band, you just have to look up Facebook, Twitter, and just um, put them all together and say they all like this band. So that's feasible and you will have high precision rates, of course, if they are not lying. But in, the ca in, in case of terrorists, you, you, they, of course, they don't show themselves like this. And you, the features you have there are really, um, I mean, they are, they are difficult to model. You don't, I mean, we have much, there's not enough data, there are not enough terrorists. Uh, to, to do that kind of stuff, and uh, there is no correlation between the, the haystack is getting bigger and the needles are getting more in there. So, uh, false positive rates poorly mathematically just explode. No, but what I mean is they are going to move the, 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 the needles. If they profile people, mm -hmm. they can send them messages which confirm their views because they know their views, and then. Very slowly, they can move them in a certain direction. Yeah, that's also possible. Yeah, so they, also they influence their 
position and then they can influence uh, elections. So yes, of course, yeah. There are also uh, documents from uh, G G uh, GCHQ where they yeah. manipulate polls and stuff like this, or where they set up uh, bots to influence public opinion. So all these kind of uh, the Russians are doing something is a little bit... Um, they help with bots. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, bot are, bo both are doing the same thing, and there are, there are slides uh, from Snowden about so They this create kind of bubbles, stuff. and they move these bubbles around yeah. in the way that it's politically yeah. uh, fine. Yeah, but... Of course, the one thing helps the other thing, yeah. So that's the end of democracy. Yes, of course. So we need to but stop the, this the kind of The public doesn't understand that this is happening. And Not really, no. I mean, we, 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 have, we had a public debate in Switzerland with a popular mm -hmm. votation, and uh, they, they just didn't understand what's going on. Uh, that so was my impression, okay. yeah. Mass surveillance is necessary for mass manipulation. Yes. That's my statement. Yes. I would also <laughs> sign up to that. <laughs> Yeah, please step to the mic up there in the front. Thanks. Hi. Um, I was a little unclear on the, uh, the search terms to categorize something as either left-wing or right-wing. That it was automatically generated. Yes. Um, but were they then um, confirmed by anyone, like by you, that this is look, actually looks like something that would be left-wing, or this looks like something that would be right-wing, so w uh, that uh, would imply some of your bias, but also that it needs to take more um, human hands into it. It can't be that... No, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, change anything, so it was poor mathematics, or computational linguistics, which is somehow more and more getting like mathematics because, uh, I mean, I said it in the beginning, the rule-based approaches are, are getting less funded and they are very complicated to, to construct, to model. So everything is going towards statistics and also here I just applied statistical methods. So it was, I, I didn't uh, remove any selectors, so I just take them as they were. But of course, in reality, perhaps they would remove some of them. It may be, I don't know. So the, so the human selection that was then done was that you pointed out which oh, website you were doing. And this was the evaluation. I, I, I then just used, uh, you can just imagine, I just took the terms, put them on start page, on DuckDuckGo, uh, wrote down the five no, no, I mean the step and, before that, yeah, when, okay. you, when you're picking out how to get these keywords and key terms automatically, oh. what you fed it was the websites. So that is then yes. the human selection. Yes, the, I, I just used the websites as training material. So I did pre-processing there. I just tokenized everything, removed stop words. And then I used Apache Tika to also extract uh, text from PDFs and stuff like this. And then I had raw text, which I could use to generate selectors out of this. What I mean is that also means that these websites, people who publish the stuff there will they will in indirectly affect how, people, how, how well people will be able to find them automatically. Yeah, that was just an assumption. Yes. But my, I mean, that's the problem here. It's, it's, not, it's not clear if, if, it's, uh, if, it's, uh, if it fits together in the end. I mean, in the end, the false positive rates uh, are not that good. I mean, the bigger the, the corpus gets, the, the more f uh, false hits you have in general. Yeah. Good. Thanks a lot. I think that was the time we had to spend. Uh, thank you very much, Hernani Marquez, for the great speak. Mm -hmm.